you can earn a total of 21 points in this game. And if you earn at least 10, I will do any topic of your choosing for the next story dive. Bring it on. I think this is Giga Chad romance. <laughs> this feels like a trap. Welcome back, everybody. It's Story Dive. We're here on the train, and today we're talking about some interesting stuff. I think the, to the topic today is going to be on story genres, but not only story genres, but really obscure story genres. Um, but before we get into that, uh, how are you doing, Kai? How's it going? Hi. Um, <laughs> good. I just finished a sandwich. So, oh, heck yeah. Like, I'm not hungry anymore. Nice. It was Jimmy's John's. Really? Nice. Dude, Jimmy has good Johns, dude. I'll tell you what. Um, dude, he's got some good stuff. Yeah, not sponsored, uh, but feel free to reach out. We will gladly sponsor you, Jimmy Johns. We are big sandwich fans. We'll already. give you those free smells you're wanting. <laughs> oh, always. Yeah. Isn't that oh, your yeah. thing, the free smells? Mike's way? More like no way, dude. Only Jimmy's over here. Um, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, you're doing I'm pretty doing good. good. Yeah, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, just um, uh, knee deep in projects. I'm I'm making a board game. Nah, I'm making two dude, board games now. That, actually, guys, it's a pretty good so, board game too. Well, we'll announce more about it when he has more to say about it. But uh, well, so there's that one, but there's a new one. Oh, there's a new one too. I'm making yeah. another one, dude. Yeah, I I'm excited. It's like uh, Kai's board game production has kind of been slowly roasting in the background, but. When in like I, I'm yeah. excited for them these to actually be released, dude. I'm a huge board game guy, so. But yeah, yeah, more more to come on that soon. But uh, in the meantime, I'm doing good. How are you doing? That's good. I'm doing good. You know, just chugging along. Uh, you know, making making the dough. Uh, you know, doing this podcast. So uh, are you the train? Because you're chugging along. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! No, I'm uh. Well, maybe I am the train. Maybe I'm my own train who's chugging on. Maybe the we're train. all trains just chugging along the yeah, train. It's, it's a big journey analogy. of life. Yeah. You know, like we're on the track, you know, it's the, it's the analogy train, right? Back to episode three. Was it? I think it's episode three. Go back and watch that one. It's actually really good. Um, and like, and subscribe and all that, you know, uh, cause it helps. It helps to say that. Especially if you enjoy this content, you should. We ask you to like and subscribe regardless, but if you truly do enjoy the content, definitely like and subscribe. That's yeah. the extra mile. I mean, it, it honestly, the, it, the and it tells pajamas. It That's tells us bees on the knees. <laughs> it tells us that you actually like what you're hearing. And you know, if you don't tell us, put it down in the comments, please tell us how much you don't like the show. If you don't like it. Um, cause it's good to know. We, we honestly, we, we don't know sometimes like, how the show is received you know we're just we're just putting it out there so but enough of that um i we got to do story of the week <laughs> no more nonsense enough of that <laughs> um I we're a do... no nonsense story sorry i'm interrupting you you're the you're the host you go yes. ahead yeah i'm the host kai all right um so we're gonna do story of the week but Kai did the story of the week last week because I forced him to. So I'm going to, I'm going to give my story of the week this week. Um, talking about what's been going on with my computer. Cause I have the, uh, a pretty interesting story to share about my PC. Um, so yeah, so this is what happened. Um, my, uh, so I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the beginning. Like how did this all start? Cause it like turned into this big, long, uh, thing I had to deal with. Uh, essentially, my my friends have been upgrading their PCs and one of my one of my close friends he's building one from scratch that's like it's a super nice PC in fact uh, we just built it this past weekend and man is it nice it is you know he definitely like spent the money on it it's a very very expensive PC but man is it nice and uh but be, because i knew this was happening this was like over uh, it was like a month ago now or close to it was like 3 weeks ago um, I was like, okay, I'm going to upgrade my graphics card because my graphics card wasn't super up to snuff. And a lot of the games that we were going to play once, once my friends, like we were, we were going to do these PC nights and things where we play these 
more modern games and my PC could not handle them in its current state. So I was like, okay, fine. I will upgrade my PC with a new graphics card. And that's what I did. So I bought a new graphics card uh, for anyone out there who's wondering. I think it was the, oh dang. Um, I forget what it's called. It was, it's the NVIDIA. No, it's not NVIDIA. It's Radeon like 6750 XT, I think. Something Holy like that. cow. That's a chonker. <laughs> you, I have to admit, sorry, not to interrupt. You don't need that. Well, I don't need it. <laughs> but of... I had the money and I was like, I want to upgrade my PC and I don't want to have to think about it for a long time. So, okay. That, that makes, I was like the, I just bought a new laptop myself and it's got a 40 something in it yeah you're, yeah yeah you're essentially years ahead of my uh, graphics well, card mine, which can run all the games you've told me well, you're playing hold, hold on because radeon works on different numbers than nvidia okay so if you have an nvidia card that's like a 400 series so like for instance like back you know like a couple years ago the best cards were the 3080 and the 3090 like people will throw those numbers around that's nvidia numbers whereas radeon works on different numbers so my graphics card might be closer to the 3080 maybe um so if you have a 400 series of nvidia that is already that that's i don't know i don't I don't know where my card stands i'll be honest i my friend sent it to me and said it was good and i trusted him so i bought it um anywho it is a pretty beefy graphics card and i got it and i i installed it in my pc and i'm not like super tech savvy with pc building i've dabbled in it and i've like watched my friends build pcs like pretty much all the pcs i've ever used and even like the one my brother has, like uh, they were all built from like my computer friends who knew what they were doing. Um, and I've like watched them intently, but I've never done it really myself all the whole way through. So when I got this graphics card, I was like, okay, let's figure this out. So I, I bust open my PC and I dust it out because it's been a minute and I put it up and I stick the graphics card in and I have to like remember which cords go where and I, I plug it in and I go to turn it on. And when I, when I hit the power button, everything lights up for a second and then it shuts off. So it's like, it, it like it, it like turned on for like a split second and then everything turned off. And I was like, huh, that's not Ooh. good. So I like, you, you love know, that. I, I, uh, me and my friend, we like troubleshooted for a long time and we could not get it to work. And I was afraid that like, I like broke my motherboard or maybe i got a faulty graphics card like i had all these worries in my head because you know i just spent like hundreds of dollars on this thing and so it's it's like in a way i i was super like stressed and like upset because i it, you know i spent hundreds of dollars to essentially go from having a pc to not having a pc um because it no longer would turn on and uh i was like super defeated but then the next day i called another PC friend because I was like, I'll just tell him what's going on and see if he has any other advice. Cause like, you know, multiple minds, multiple solutions, you know? Um, and I kind of start trouble. Mind with melded him. is a problem solved. Yeah. Meld minds. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to like come up with a slogan? Kind of. I don't know. I, yeah. Um, it was pretty good. Keep going. This is good stuff. Yes, yeah, so, so you, a hero saved the day. <laughs> yeah, so my th this friend, we finally, uh, he was able to help me troubleshoot a little bit more precisely. Not that my other friend couldn't, but um, I don't know. He just had, I think he understood more about like what to do when the PC wouldn't turn on because that's kind of the roadblock we we ran into. And we troubleshooted a bunch of stuff and we have, <laughs> dude, I it was crazy. I, I pulled out an old PC that we don't really use anymore because like me and my brother have upgraded to like way better PCs, but like we had this older PC that we had back in the day and I pulled that guy out cause we still have him. And to test if this was my power supply, cause I, I, I kind of had this theory after like troubleshooting the night before that it was my power supply. My power supply was like dead or something like something happened. And I think that that's the issue. And so to confirm this, I pull out that older PC and I literally unplug all of the power supply cords and plug them into the older pc like so like if you can picture this in your mind i have my pc and i have like an older one like side by side they're both open on one side and those open sides are like almost touching 
And I, because the cords, I didn't want to take out the entire power supply if I didn't know that that was the problem. Um, and I, yeah, cause like I would have had to replace it with the old PCs one and that would have been like a huge ordeal. So instead I just put them side by side and took my power supply cords or I put the ones from the old PC into mine and mine can now turn on again. If I use the old power supply from my other PC. So it was the power supply. It was at the, the end power of the day? supply. Yes. I was able to like a hundred percent confirm it. So the next day I drove to Best Buy and bought a new power supply, went home, put it in and everything works now. So I think that so you essentially <laughs> gave your computer the equivalent of like caffeine pill on crack by giving it this new graphics card and it just didn't know what to do with it, had a stroke and died. <laughs> I don't well, because I don't know what the right analogy would be because yeah, it the new graphics card was too much for my power supply, which is so stupid because the graphics card, I looked it up on Google and it's like, you need at least a 650 watt power supply to be able to use this graphics card. And mine was a 750. It was an EVGA 750 watt power supply. So it should have been fine. Okay. It's not like I didn't check. Like I think me and my friend, when we ordered this, we double checked that it was going to work with what my PC had. Cause that's what you do. Cause you don't know if parts are going to work together. And so it just, it's so stupid to me that I, you know, I, the PC I'm using is only a few years old and I guess that's just enough time for this power supply to kick the bucket. We don't, you know, that's it's like, that's like going to senior home years for, computers. I guess, I guess yeah, it probably they... gave you the most cynical, like old person middle finger. And was like, Hey, doing this crap for you and ducks out. Dude, maybe. I mean, I don't know what the lifespan is of computer parts typically. Um, but yeah, maybe because, you know, I have used this PC a lot and I've, I've streamed on it. I've recorded on it. I've, uh, you know, done long, long gaming sessions on it. So like it, it's a it's been well used and maybe it was just time to get a new power supply. Uh, but it was an extra like hundred and fifty dollars. I didn't want to spend that weekend because I'd already spent like a lot of money on this graphics card. So. Anyways, uh, we got it all up and running, but now my new graphics card does not have a DVI port, which I use for my second monitor. So I am currently rocking one monitor, and t I think this weekend I'm gonna go get an adapter that goes from DVI to HDMI. Uh, so I can have one monitors again. monitor master. Yeah, for for those who don't and, know, um, uh, DVI is what came before HDMI, and it's it looks like it's like a rectangle with a bunch of pins. And it's got two little knobs like uh, that's on the side. what's that called? You stick it in and you like tighten the knobs to make sure it's not loose. Um, and it's white. Dude, those things are always really fun to like stick your thumb on and just like make, <laughs> make a pattern of the pins on your thumb. Oh, I, I don't think I've that's ever. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, that that would be fun. I don't think I've ever, I've, I don't think I've ever thought about doing that. Um, but. Uh, yeah, VGA is the blue one, and so DVI is the white one. Anyways, just for just a little history lesson for anybody out there that has no idea what a DVI cable is, because they definitely aren't, uh, they're not normal anymore. You know, I feel like people... I know this is super off topic, but it does make me wonder, like, if it's still going to be a good skill to be cable savvy in the future. Is it back in the day of satellite? It, I say back in the day, but that's like maybe 10 years ago or so it was so important when when all your cables had specific things you had the red yellow and white cable and all yeah. three of them were for like audio differences and then i think red was video and then you had your dvi and your hdmi and your usb but now you have usb c i just wonder at what point like cables will we enter like the singularity of cable I mean, and it would be like a universal type of cable. Why do you differentiate cables in any way? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we are moving towards that already with USB C's um, kind of becoming an all purpose cable in a lot of ways. Like, people, like you can actually use USB C's as like a, like a video cord in some situations. Like, you know what I mean? You can plug a laptop into a projector or a capture card or whatever using USB-C. So like it's already kind of moving that way where I feel like in the future it is gonna, just going to be everything's just going to be one cord. 
Um, but I don't know. I still feel like we have a long way. I, I don't see HDMIs going away anytime soon unless they get upgraded to something else. Um, just because I don't think USB C's are versatile enough. But I don't know, dude. We 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 talk about this more. If you guys are interested in in cords, uh, we talk about this more in the in between that came out earlier this week about controllers. We did. Um, we tried to figure out the most goaded controller cable. Yeah. Um, cords are. Let, let's just hope cords just go away. You know what? That's actually what I want. Is let's just <laughs> let's just not have cords. Anymore. I seem to recall you had a different opinion when we talked about it. No, okay. Well, listen, my opinion I'll, is that I'll no, 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 you hold, do that. You know what? Yeah. If you want the opinion, go to the episode. But I, I just to, just to def, like not to defend myself, but like just to, um, clarify here. I my my dream would be to have a a world without cords but I don't want to sacrifice what cords currently give us. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be wireless, but with the same quality. Cause right now I feel like wireless, you diminish your quality a little bit. Usually that's, that's the trade off. Logan's one dream so. in this world. It's not, but trust me, I hate cords. like, I hate them. World them hunger. Here. It's not saving the climate. It's not solving world hunger. It's not stopping all the wards. It's, <laughs> A cordless world is Logan's paradise. Well, see, this is what you don't realize, Kai, is that a cordless world would solve all those other problems. So, would <laughs> I? <laughs> Honestly, you might have to explain that one to me no, later. No, no, no. You just got to th- just just think about it, right? Just think about it. Let, let, yeah. We'll, okay, we'll, I'll, we'll, I'll we'll, we'll get back. To rack you. my brain on what that means later. But yeah, that was my story of the week. Um even though it was a couple weeks ago, but I think it still applies because I still only have one monitor going. So, um, okay. Well, we got to get into the, today's topic because uh, hopefully we have enough time. I don't know how much time this is going to take, but I'm really excited. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, ob- obscure story genres in storytelling. Um, so... Right off the bat, Kai. Specifically obscure ones? Yes. So it's this started out as me just being like, oh, let's... I was like, for this week, I want to talk about story genres. Like, like let's just go through them. I was like, maybe... Because in my mind, I was like, maybe there's only like, you know, 20 different genres, right? Uh, like, let's just like go through them all or try to come up with a new genre or something. And I, the more I research I did, the more I was like, oh, man, there's like a million bazillion genres. Um, so I ended up doing, I, I kind of went a different way with it and, uh, it, it, we're now going to go down a rabbit hole of obscure story genres, but I did ask you Kai to bring a new genre to the table. Um, and if you want, we could save that for the end. If you think that'd be better, uh, after you've heard a bunch of obscure ones, or do you, do you think you should come out with it now and see if it holds up? As we go throughout the episode, see, I'll come out with it now and see if okay. it holds up. Cause I, I don't know. Well, I know this is already a genre, but like you did ask me to beforehand to come up with a, a genre and I am a story diver of my word. <laughs> so I came up with a genre. One it's, that you think no one's genre. ever heard of? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I'm excited. so there's something I already know that there's something like unto this, but not quite this. So the one I have is I call it a monotonizer. Oh, a... wait, this fits right in with what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, man. Uh, thing. So I feel like I already. Uh, no, this is lost good. before I began. No, 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 no. This but... is good. Like, I feel like you may have done it is what I'm saying. Like, uh, OK, so. Stories, I, it made me kind of start to think into the dynamics of stories and why they are so appealing to people and how lately a lot of stories rely so much on spectacle and keeping your attention as fast as it can mm, so that okay. you don't like start scrolling on your phone. I feel like that's a big thing in a lot of entertainment. It's just like, what can keep your attention the longest? So we got to... We got to keep that attention. We got to keep things flowing and going. And it made me wonder, there's a lot of older entertainment still has ways to keep you focused. There's a reason that 
Lord of the Rings is still such a highly read book. Yes. You know, uh, and yeah. I, even though it probably doesn't pace as quickly as newer entertainment goes, yes. so I was thinking about it in that vein. It's interesting for me to think about a lot of stories are about the dynamic, uh, action packed pieces of life, the events that like change people and stuff like that. Life is all about change. But it's intriguing to create a genre of storytelling that is very simply trying to explain in the very most detail a very monotonous task. Something like driving. So you would record a... Mm. Maybe not record, but you would think in your mind the whole time you do something monotonous. It could be uh, you have some files to... Uh, they pulled together. Heaven forbid you still use paper in your company or whatever your business. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but you know, you got that task. For example, you got to print out a bunch of printouts and staple them and hand them to employees or whatever. That's a super monotonous task, and I'm intrigued to see someone try and tell a story with that. How would they bring such a very monotonous, boring piece of reality? How would they bring life into that? How would they make that an interesting experience for someone to try and step into it, even though it's such a monotonous action? Yeah. And what so, did you call it? A monotonizer? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I, I actually, I, that's, I don't know if that exists. You know, I don't, I think you, you may have actually come up with a new thing. Um, did I do it? I think so. I mean, uh, I'd let, I mean, I could search it here. Uh, monotonizer no dude it, nothing's popping up so i think you've done it i think you've actually succeeded completely with the task at hand oh okay so hey. that is well, awesome i didn't realize i could win so hard but i guess that's just works <laughs> of being me <laughs> <laughs> um dude yeah that's great i uh, i don't know if those stories would be enjoyable um but I, I am intrigued to well, see it done, at least, like you were saying, like, you know, and maybe because like, I would say I feel like if anyone made a story like that, that was enjoyable, it would have like humor in it. Right. Like, you know, because like, it makes me think of the uh, did you ever watch like House of Mouse or. Uh, you know, like the SpongeBob episode where like the narrator's talking about how to make a Krabby Patty, you know, it's like. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this genre, but without the humor, I just I just don't know if it'd be enjoyable. Like the humor is kind of like what makes it good from the ones <laughs> I've, I've seen. You know, I feel like I'm almost describing um, shampoo commercials or like perfume commercials. Is kind of what I feel like I'm describing. Is like the you're you're taking something so monotonous as spraying on some perfume and making that action feel alive and dynamic and, and right. freeing and yes. whatever. Yeah. Am I just describing, did I just make a storytelling genre that is just an ad? Well, did I invent I'm, ads? I mean, Cause from, if I did, from what, oh. you, from what you described, it's like, it didn't seem to me like the story needed to be exciting or you know, enjoyable. It seemed it, it was just the fact that you're making a story out of a monotonous task. Um, so I guess to be a, a monotonizer genre, right? If we're classifying this as an official genre, in order to be one, it needs to include a monotonous task. But you, because like, this, we're gonna get into the the topic here of genres in general. The the definition is an artistic composition or a category of artistic composition, right? So essentially it is labeling, it's, it's trying to categorize different stories, right? So like different types of stories are gonna be called different things. How do we categorize them? And then you have subgenres which categorize the big genres because you're essentially getting down to like what this story is. If you had to describe it to somebody in the simplest way possible, how would you tell them what kind of a story it is, right? So I think monotonizer okay. is a great label, but it would probably be paired with other things. So it's like, oh, this would be a monotonizer comedy, right? Or this would be a monotonizer horror, 
You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's typically okay. probably what you would hear. I don't know if you'd ever hear monotonizer. What is the, horror. what is the equivalent <laughs> of a monotonizer horror? Like what? It would be a monotonizer, a but like, as it goes on, like I, I, I could see it going a couple different ways. Right. Cause it could be, dude. Like, it's like when you have to, like when a customer comes up to your cash register, and wants to order something obnoxious from McDonald's that doesn't exist. I bet that could be a monotonous well, horror. Well, That's you, you interesting. Know the, have you seen the, uh, what's it called? Uh, it was like horror videos of like commercials or like, it's like on a CRT TV kind of vibe. And then it'll, it'll like go to static and there's like faces and it's like in a dark room typically. What, what was it called? Um, it has a certain name to it. Like, uh, uh, You're talking about like terminal or terminal space, what's it called? Limited, liminal space. No, well, maybe uh, it's not like acoustic. What's it called? It's called something horror. I can't remember, but it usually involves like old static television, like old commercials, but they like get really dark. So maybe that would qualify. I don't know. Um, anyway, that was awesome, Kai. I'm glad that you were able to actually come up with a genre. That's really cool. But yeah, that's what, Thank you. That's what uh, genres yeah. are for, right? They are to just categorize a certain type of story. So, Kai, I have prepared a game for your, us to play. Um, and I have a proposal. Okay. So this game, I'm going to be uh I'm gonna be telling you certain obscure genres just by title, right? And you're going to have to guess what they are. Um, and if you guess, kind of like what we did in the hook episode, right? Um, or maybe, okay. maybe maybe the opposite of... No, yeah, it's very similar to the hook episode where I'm going to tell you what it is and you're going to have to guess what it is just from the name. Uh, and you can earn a lot of points. Okay, now here's the caveat, all right? Um, you can earn a total of 21 points in this game. And if you earn at least 10, okay, that's the mark you have to hit then I will, uh, I will do any topic of your choosing for the next story dive that I host. Um, you can choose what I... Any topic of my choosing? Yeah, so you can choose what I have to host the episode on. Um, but if you don't reach 10, then I get to pick your topic for next week. Oh, dang. There's some so, stakes. Yes. Ooh. So there are 21 points to be earned here. You have to earn at least 10. Okay. So you do have a slight advantage. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So are you Bring ready? Bring it on. Are you ready for the I first one? I want this power. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. The, the first, uh, the first thing you have to name, cause ju just for this first round, this is called round one or it is the, the first portion of the game. There's, there's going to be another one later, um, with slightly different rules. So this one, you have to uh, tell me what genre you think it's a part of. Okay. So you don't need, because this is a, a sub genre of its own. So I just want you to kind of like, give me like, what kind of like genre do you think this is a part of? Um, and then the second thing you have to tell me is what you think it is, right? Like the definition of it, uh, just what it is. And then afterwards we'll have a little bonus question for you to earn a third point. So the, so genre okay. and what it is okay. for two points and then bonus point, the third point. Okay. So the first round here, uh, bring it on. Okay. So the first one is lad lit. Lad lit. Yeah. And I'm gonna, <laughs> here, I'm just gonna in, in our chat, lad lit? I'm just gonna put the names so you know how they're spelled. Uh, okay, I was gonna say, can you like use it in a sentence? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> so yeah, this is gonna be much harder than I thought. All right. So yeah, I picked some of the like this was this was fun to come up with because there's a lot of weird genres out there. So I picked some, some of the weirdest sounding ones. Lad lit. Yeah. So I gotta. Me, what genre do you think it's in? And then tell like... me what the definition of it would be. Okay, I. Th think this is my take and i'm sticking with it okay i'm thinking that this is in the romance genre okay because lit is often short for literature so lad literature i think this is giga chad romance like <laughs> alpha male seeking <laughs> love 
and oh, he man. goes and gets it like an alpha male would, like a the most testosterone filled masculine literature. I really think it's in the romance genre because that's don't they like do things like call someone a mad lad? Isn't that a thing, or am I just like I, ancient? I don't know. I don't. Stone? I don't know where the term lad originated and when it became a thing that like i don't know if it was ever like a popular term i don't know um but i i love the okay, answer i'm okay. going for overly masculine literature in the romance genre okay um so the genre was listed as by age which is very strange um what? I, think by it, age? It, I think it was wait <laughs> yes that is what it was that is what it was called uh when I was looking up what it was under in terms of genres, uh, it was under the by age category. Um, so I think it, cause I think what this is specifically talking about, right. Cause I have the definition here, which I'll just read to you. So lad, lad is in like a little lad, like well, give me so, so, five shillings and I'll give you a duck lad. So a lad, Wait, it's lad the other lit, way around. Lad lit was a term used principally from the 1990s to the early 2010s to describe a male authored popular novels about young men and their emotional and personal lives. Wait, so, so I'm actually kind of close. Yes. I, so I'm not going to give you the genre cause it's not romance. Uh, but you're I, right. I guess I, it's not I'm going to give you the accuracy point because I, yes, guess, because lit does stand for literature. Um, the term combines the word lad, which refers to a boy or young man, and lit, which is short for literature. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, so I got the... Uh, it, the I'm going gonna to give it to you for the accuracy, all right? But not okay. the genre. But yeah. So I just got the time period that this genre <laughs> is. I was off by, like, several decades. Okay, you ready? <laughs> are you ready for the bonus round? The bonus question? Oh yeah, there's a bonus round, dude. Lay it on me. Okay, I'll so take you. Right now, you have one point. Okay, you, you, if you win this bonus, you can get another point. Wait, what is bonus? What expound so, on bonus? Bonus is just going to be a. I'm going to ask you a question based off of the genre we just covered, and you can. Earn oh, an extra so point. it's like trivia. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, why did okay. you just call it trivia? I don't know. I just bonus sounds cooler. Bonus. You know? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. It could be bonus. Yeah, you're right. Bonus. Lay it on me. Go uh, bonus. True or false? After lad lit was introduced, there was a new genre called chick lit, targeting young women in the late 1990s and <laughs> early 2000s. Chick lit. <laughs> is true, true that false. what a baby chicken is? A well, yeah, chick but it, it's, well, it's just, just like, called a chick. It's just like lad lit, where it's spaced, right? It's chick space lit. <laughs> okay, but. <laughs> True or false? Uh, Is chicklet a thing? I got a true. I think it's that's it, just too specific. It's that gotta your, be true. Is that your final answer? What hmm? is lad the opposite of chick? Like, is in the time period that it was, was chick used in the same way that lad was used? I don't think so. That's um, maybe. But I've never heard in those old stories. They don't say, <laughs> come here, lad. Or they don't say, really come here, him. chick. I really but got I feel like going in circles. They, <laughs> if they do say that, <laughs> it's incredibly masculine and weird to say that. that I don't know. I got to go with true. Fa no, false. No, true. Yeah, false. Fa that, is well, that your, yeah, false. Is that Let's your final false. answer? Take it false. Yes. Okay. Um, it was true. <laughs> Oh, so dang it. I psyched myself out. Dang uh, it. So you're Wait, currently. So did they call people chicks back in the I... time? Well, yeah. So you have to keep in mind this was from 1990s to early 2000s, is when Chick lit. And so... Oh, okay. So, but Chick was prominent yes, later. I think chick was definitely so that... a 90s term. I, I think so. Okay. That, that, I... that's up. That adds up. Bring it. Um, I, oh, I and... should have, I listened not good yeah. enough. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Um, and I'm down to repeat anything if you need me to repeat anything. But you are currently sitting at one point, and we're moving on to the. I didn't know you could repeat things. I feel that's that's why that I'm the rules were not okay. properly established. Okay. okay, listen. I had to, I had to give you. I you didn't even really get the accuracy. You only kind of got it. So 
be grateful. Okay, okay. well. Um, all right, fine. I'll okay. take I'll take the win where I can get it. I, all right. One point. Round two, planetary romance. What are you thinking? Planetary romance? Yeah. As in like planets? I mean, I can't tell you. Uh this feels like a trap. <laughs> listen, His, listen, man, just go with your gut, bro. Like it says romance in the thing. So I gotta I gotta say it's romance and the i'm gonna go with romance again because it you're, you're trying to trick me i i i'm calling it i'm calling the bluff but in regards i have to explain what it is right um yes so you're going with romance for your genre yeah planetary okay. romance it sounds very space odyssey kind of to me where it's like Ah, uh, he did. You totally. I feel like I'm <laughs> like listening to you grin across the airwaves. Oh man! Just said how wrong I'm gonna get this. Um, very space odyssey. Is it a space odyssey romance? Like, well, remember this is a like, sub genre, so it's like there are multiple stories that fall under this category. Okay. Is this two planets actually falling in love with each other? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, you need to give me your Am final I... answer so I can tell you what's going on. All right, I think I'm thinking too hard about this. I'm going to go with the whole space odyssey, like lovers from across the stars meet each other in this like romantic way, kind of like Dollar and Gomorrah-esque. Okay. Kind of stuff. They're yes. from different planets, maybe different species, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. So is that, that, that I, okay, we're, I'm going to get into it. So, yes, I'm going to count that. Um, but the genre yes. is under science fiction, um, which. No. Okay. Wait. It's but... weird because, uh, he. Oh, listen, on the Wikipedia page, even though it says planetary romance as like the title, it doesn't really mention the it doesn't really mention the word romance in terms of how it describes it. In fact, so the, the, the description here is uh, stories that consist of adventures uh, on one or more exotic alien planets characterized by distinctive physical and cultural backgrounds. Um, so it's weird. Technically to be a planetary romance is essentially, you just have to follow a character's story on one or more different planets that aren't earth um and it has to be very clear that it's not earth um because it says uh like it, it says on the page that like if it doesn't really say it's earth but it's very earth-like then it doesn't really count as a planetary romance but if it's so i don't i don't it doesn't really say anything in here about it having to be uh like two people falling in love or anything which is just okay, really but, interesting to me. But it has romance listed in its thing. I know. So I'm, ah, uh, I feel like I'm like scamming you out of this one, but yeah, don't do it here. I'll give I you, I know a, what you're I'll, thinking. I'll give you a half point for each. How's that? Cause like, what? Like, like a half point half for accuracy, point for each. half point for genre, giving you one point total. So I still just get one point. Yeah, I will give you one point for both, <laughs> just because it it wasn't exactly what oh, it had right, listed. Right. Hey, I'm just trying yes, to be I accurate to the page, play. okay? Like, uh, it really doesn't mention anything about like you don't have to necessarily fall in love, um, to be a planetary romance. All right, but if um, I lose, I'm calling it. I'm losing <laughs> on a technicality. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I I, th I think this is fair. Okay. Um, now here's the bonus question. Fair is fair. Name, and we all know that this train is fair. Name a planetary romance that you have seen or read. That is my bonus question to you. I've seen or read? 
Yes, and I can confirm that you have seen or read at least one planetary romance, at least classified here on Wikipedia. Uh, read the definition again. Okay. Um, so, consists of adventures on one or more exotic alien planets characterized by distinctive physical and cultural backgrounds. Some planetary romances take place against the background of a future culture where travel between worlds by spaceship is commonplace. Others, particularly the earliest examples of the genre, do not invoking flying carpets, astral projection, or other methods of getting between planets. Wait, flying carpets doesn't count? Uh, no, no, no. It says that in early examples, uh, they that's what they used instead. Oh, I thought it was like specifically saying flying carpets does not count. Like we will not just like absolute discrimination against right, flying right. carpets for some reason. Okay. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Um, well, I was just gonna say in either case, it is the planet side adventures which are the focus of the story, not the mode of travel. So again, it needs to be on an alien planet, but focused on the characters and the romance primarily. Um, it's kind of that was my own definition of it. So but yeah, it, it doesn't okay. really say anything on here about like it having to be, you know, uh, a love story. I'm guessing I've thrown in Avatar, the blue people. All right. Uh, that is one of them. So you absolutely Heck yeah. get a point for that. All right. Wait, do I get bonus points if I can guess other ones? Um, I'll give you, if you can guess two more, I'll give you one more point. How's that? Okay. Um, Star Trek. Let's see. And I'm only going off of what's on this list. I don't think this classifies everything. Okay. I feel like I could count Star Trek. I feel like that would totally And count. Interstellar. What, does that one count? Actually, I don't know if I want to count Star Trek because that show primarily takes place on a ship. It doesn't really have anything to do. Hey. But they go on the planets like every single episode. Yeah, but you're, you're not. Hmm, you're not focusing on the planets, really. Are you like the, so the are, point is that you're I guess it is called planetary romance. OK, fine. I just won't take the point. Whatever. Okay, I, get I, it. I don't know. I haven't seen Interstellar, but it's not on the list. Uh, some other ones would include oh, Thor Ragnarok, which I might be an interesting pick. Aquaman. Uh, in comics, you have Aquaman. Like, Planet Hulk is listed here. Uh, like, there's there's some other ones. I don't know if you know what they are. Is John Carter listed on there? Yeah, it is actually. Heck yeah! I so, just to give you more of an like idea of great. what qualifies, because again, it's it sometimes it's hard to know. <laughs> but hey, you're sitting at three points. Okay, so you only need to learn seven more. And, okay. and you and you win, right? Like that that's the threshold. Okay, round three. Hard boiled. Boiled? <laughs> hard, Wait. Hard, hard boiled. Like an egg. Like an egg. <laughs> uh hard boiled? <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay. I'm drawing familiarity. That made sense. What? It's familiar to me. <laughs> oh, it maybe it is. <laughs> um, let me think here. Is it's got to be mystery? I feel like it's mystery. Hard boiled you, is mystery. Can you be more specific? Just to kind of help you out here, I feel like you're on the right track. I feel like hard boiled is mystery, but in my mind, it's like a character dynamic. It's the way the characters are presented that's that's very specific to this genre. Like a hard boiled mystery is very like Sherlock Holmes esque in my mind. I, could you use um, another word to describe the genre of Sherlock Holmes other than mystery? Uh, hard boiled. <laughs> it's, 
Okay. Um, okay. I, I, well, uh, I don't know because it's you, a mystery. Well, I'm just saying. Uh, how much more specific do you need me to go with it? I'm just saying that, like, there are certain words I'm looking for here for the genre, and you're like tiptoeing around them, right? So. Oh, ting. Well, it's a it's a whodunit kind of thing. Right. So what it's, other it's what like, other genres would classify, dude? I like I it's like I need you to say it at least one of these. What other genres would classify as hard boiled? Or uh like Sherlock Holmes or mystery, like the kind of vibe that you're you're saying it is. Um Oh, like, it's other- uh like straight to the point. Uh quirky characters that like oh, man. there's a lot of sass with each other and <laughs> it's there's a, like it's a, a clear villain it's a clear villain. <laughs> yeah okay um i don't know are any of these words no i i somehow a... i somehow like you're somehow getting further away i don't i don't understand um so wait so g- oh, give, no. give your definition and then let's return to the genre after that <laughs> okay so i feel like it's a type of mystery uh and hard boiled is it has to do with the character it's very um quick witted but standoffish characters but the mm, you got to be more specific think think about setting I feel, I feel like you're on the setting. right track here which is why i'm trying to like help you out think about like the setting of hard boiled like it fits a very specific point uh things kind of like the christmas carol is a similar okay kind of yes setting just this like european kind of british slash english setting in in the cities in the slums or yeah Ah, dude i don't i don't know kai i don't i don't know if i can count this but okay, Please. I I'm gonna give you the genre I'm, because you man, you got so close. I'm gonna give you the genre, but I'm not gonna give you the accuracy because it <laughs> it it just is. I feel like this genre is a little too specific, um, and you weren't able to be specific enough. So the genres I was looking for were crime, detective, and noir. But I mean, you said ah. you said Sherlock Holmes and you said mystery. I'm going to give you one for it, okay? Because you might as well have said detective. It just wasn't quite it. Um, but yeah, so these are... Because uh, so the, 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 I, I don't know if Sherlock Holmes qualifies. Um, but did a yeah, hard, it's a crime. It's hard a... Boil, well, hard boiled genres are specifically ones about detectives who they battle the violence of organized crime that flourished during Prohibition, 20, uh, 1920s to 1930s, and its aftermath, while dealing with a legal system that has become as corrupt as the crime itself. Uh, the characters are usually rendered cynical by the cycle of violence. Uh, the detectives of hard-boiled fictions are often anti-heroes. Notably, hard-boiled detectives uh, include examples like Dick Tracy, uh, Philip Marlowe, Nick Charles, um, um so, does batman count maybe um but it, it seems to me because i don't batman i i think yeah he does kind of qualify as an anti-hero so maybe but dude um, can we get a batman hard-boiled movie <laughs> um, dude yeah i maybe i mean the dark knight might already be that who knows but Anyways, the dark, hard boiled. It, it was a little bit more specific, you know. Like Sherlock Holmes didn't quite fit it, um, and it's not just it. Like the mystery aspect of it isn't really part of what it is. Um, it's but more, so as we mentioned and established in the mystery episode, a crime, anything to do with a crime, is very integral to mystery. So. Yes, I'm not saying the mystery is not important. I'm just saying that in terms of you, you wouldn't label a story a hard-boiled story because it has a mystery aspect to it. You know, like the label is uh, okay. specifically like a, it's like an anti-hero that's battling like the corruption 
that was specifically caused from prohibition in 1920s. I'm not even sure exactly. I'm not too familiar with the term prohibition. Um, so I'm not sure if that's referring to specifically America or anywhere else in the world, but, um, yeah, prohibition is like, you know, the illegalization of, uh, alcohol. Oh, so like the, the, uh, wink. the Al Capone kind of era. Is that right? I might be completely, uh, maybe I might be completely wrong there. I, maybe I'm right. I don't know. But anyway, so you, I, I'm going to give you that one point, and here's the bonus question. <laughs> um, true or <Okay>. false? <laughs> true or false? After hard boiled was introduced, there was a new genre introduced called soft boiled, usually pertaining to a pushover detective That's... who has given up on fighting against corruption in the 1940s. I got to go with false on that one. False? Is that your final answer? Yeah, it's just too... Yeah, I'm going to go with false. <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, made, I was like, I that's, that too, that's too specific and too much you, you like the exact opposite. Last time, you said it was too specific, so that's why you picked it. Yeah, but that's why I said it was false, and then it happened to be true. I also oh. got it wrong because <laughs> I didn't realize the time period. But Oh, uh, dude, but what if there was soft-boiled? What if that was a thing? <laughs> soft boiled <laughs> batman oh man well it kind of reminds wouldn't you me call it like over easy or under it, under it'd be books? like uh peter peter parker in uh spider verse you know where he's got the sweatpants dude on. a sunny side up <laughs> story yeah um okay next round uh weird west <laughs> weird west weird west so okay right off the bat i think i'm gonna say it's the adventure genre. Hmm. Uh, so I guess like action adventure, which kind of goes into, well, I'm trying to think like the standard heroic tale, but the weird West, I think is aliens specifically in Western stuff oh. because it happens surprisingly a lot, either aliens or like cryptid, supernatural phenomenon weird the weird west yeah. the weird so, stuff so kai you have absolutely nailed the accuracy but no way the genres i was looking for were fantasy horror science fiction or even western um so well i did say western no you i said, said it's an adventure western did you say western I, I didn't catch that. I think I, I did. I thought you said it was a, an adventure, like, you said something else. It was like adventure or whatever. Did you say Western? Do you swear Do you swear it? Yeah, I totally said Western. Oh, no, I don't believe that. Holy confident voice. No, I don't remember you saying Western. Um, But if so, we can add this yeah. to it. Yeah. We'll see, because you might have more than enough. Well, if if... You lose because you didn't get this point. I I'll give it to you, but uh, just for for now, I'm just gonna give you the accuracy point because it is absolutely pretty much any western that combines fantasy, horror, and science fiction elements into it, which typically is zombies or aliens. Um, so for instance, like the Red nailed Dead, it, the Red Dead uh, Redemption, like with the zombies, that would be a weird western, or like the map. What? There's zombies in Red Dead Redemption? Well, there, in Red Dead Redemption 1, there is a uh, version of it. Wait, let me look it up. Um, Red Dead. What? Um, Maybe I don't know the lore of that game, but I well, thought it was it, just it, like I a Western. I think it's, it's a spinoff. So Red Dead Redemption is its own thing, and then there's Undead Nightmare, which is like this spinoff of Red Dead 1 that was kind of made for fun, I think. There might be more lore to it. Oh, okay. It. Is The called, Last of yeah. Us a weird West? No, 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 no. Because I don't think that's a Western. But it's kind of a, it's like a frontier. It's you're trying to escape. I think it's more of a. Are you sp like horror than it is a western? Okay, uh, you know what I mean. Like this is like western. So like cowboys versus elements. aliens. Yes, that would absolutely be a weird west. Um, Never seen it, but I I I think I'm intrigued by the premise. Firefly was on the list too, um, which that that makes okay. me wonder if cowboy the Bebop cowboy would Bebop. Count. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if that would count. It's not on here, mm. um, but, you know, you've got plenty of other ones. I, I'm not a huge Western guy, so 
I don't r- recognize a lot of these, but you know, Cowboys versus Indians gives me not Indians, sorry, Cowboys versus Aliens gives me hard Sharknado vibes. Like it's just a weird mix yeah. of things. And- it's just like don't necessarily doing it. need to mix. It's like doing it for the heck of it, like just to be like, oh, this would be fun, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so you've earned one point, so you're now at six points. Only four left to go. Um, and the bonus question is true or false? The term Weird West originated from a Marvel comic series in 1972 called Weird Western Tales. Uh, yeah, true. So this is actually false because it was a DC comic series called DC's Weird Western Tales. Uh, because so. I had, man, so it's like kind I, I of a trick question. I made this pretty hard. Yeah, I made this pretty hard. I was, I was like, if I do Marvel, like, I, there's no way. But well, because you told me you, I, I when you said the Weird Tales of the West, Weird West Tales or whatever, that sounded familiar to me. Like I am pretty sure either I have that comic or I've seen that comic somewhere. Yes, I. So, I I I wanted this one to kind of be a, a bait and switch. Dang, so. dang, you sneaky pulled my train <laughs> seat cushion out from under me. Yeah, now the, I'm just um, sitting on cardboard. The uh, so the term Weird West came from 1972 DC series, but there have been Weird West stories since the 1940s. In fact, I think Marvel had some Weird West. Like in ter- like the genre Weird West, they had some comics that fell under that category before 1972. But this is just where the term came from. Um, like that's when, okay, it, was well, that's when it was officially no called a weird me. Western. Um, yeah, sorry. I mean, hey, you're 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 still on track for sure. Uh, okay, this is the last of the regular uh, rounds. Um, oh dang! So I gotta like really we, nail this we're going <laughs> from, i feel like it's gonna get harder no, 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 no. you're i well maybe we'll see uh but we're going from weird west to new weird <laughs> new weird <laughs> yeah this is a real genre i promise <laughs> <laughs> new weird <laughs> new weird oh my gosh all right what do you think uh, what, are, what, are, what are you thinking I'm guessing this is still in sci-fi. I don't think we've departed from sci-fi. Because weird, when used to explain a story, is often used to explain some sort of supernatural experience. So I still think we're in sci-fi with with like aliens and or cryptids. So sci-fi, fantasy, horror, whatever you said. I got to make sure to get as many of those key names out there. Yes. So, but new okay. word, new weird. What is new? New. I can only think of Emperor's New Groove. So <laughs> it's. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> it's like Emperor's New Groove, but he like, you know, uh, accidentally, like, became a quali- I don't know. What what would be weirder than that? Like, new weird. Can I ask how old this is, or is that too specific? I'm would that give it away? Not sure. Let me. I'll get back to you on that. Um, Okay, it says it emerged in the 1990s through early 2000s. So it's a relatively new, new weird, the new genre. I'm feeling it's it's something to do with like cartoon stories, something like Futurama mm. or Ben 10, or okay, like just kind of newer cartoonish styles that predicate on the use of aliens to tell some sort of story, but that's what I've got. That's my guess. Okay. So I submit, click submit. I'm giving you a point for genre because I think the main, the main genres it's categorized as like being like are weird fiction, speculative fiction, uh, which just so you know, speculative fiction, I looked it up. It's essentially anything that's fiction that they don't really know where to put it. That's essentially what speculative fiction is, is like, oh, everything that doesn't really fit into a category is speculative fiction. Um, the et cetera of genres, yes. the miscellaneous. And then I think the big one is horror, which you did say horror. Uh, you mentioned those words. And it does say in the blurb that there it, it does combine both elements of science fiction and fantasy. So I will give you the genre point. 
Um, but what new weird is, is it's kind of, it's pretty much like one of those speculative fiction genres, uh, that also kind of like adds horror elements to it. So it's like, imagine some kind of like an experimental fiction or fantasy or sci-fi that has some horror, horror elements added to it where it's not quite, so, it's not quite horror and it's not quite fantasy. It kind of like bounces between them. Um, so are like, you like talking SCP? Um, yeah, I would say the SCP might, but SCP might be horror with a side of new weird, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, like, or maybe it's like, maybe it is a 50, 50, but I, maybe, maybe SCP. Okay. Would, so name a, so it's new weird actually doesn't have a lot to go off of the, uh, let me see here. Cause I don't want to, this is labeled as a normal easy mode. No, no, no. So the, the difficulty doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the different rounds. Um, oh, I forgot to make a bonus question for this one. Uh, so I think there's actually only 20, ah. 20 points total then. Um, okay. I might get hit with a technicality again. Dude, I, I'm sorry. Um, so the only one I, I, or yeah, so it says Thief, the game Thief in 1998, or Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Those would count as new weird, as well as Disco Elysium. Specifically the third one? Well, yeah. Oh, I, I know Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium, which I don't know, and then Pan's Labyrinth. Um, so a lot of kind of like, like I'm thinking like maybe like Coraline, like I'm thinking like things that are uh, very okay. strange and have like horror elements to them. So maybe like Brothers Grimm, but Brothers Grimm might fall under something else. But I like that's kind of the vibe. What I about get from like this. Inside or Little Nightmares? Little Nightmares might kind definitely qualify. Uh, I don't know if Inside does because. Inside might be more on the realistic side, whereas New Weird is kind of like script. Well, you know, maybe Inside would. Um, not to spoil anything, but I think Little Nightmare. My is, little is sister is New Weird. My little sister is super into Little Nightmares, and that's pretty much the only reason I know very much about it. I'll have to quiz her and see if she would classify it as New Weird. Yeah, but have you played Marwind at all? No, I've only ever played Skyrim, and that's it. So I think you'll understand why only Elder Scrolls Three counts as new weird. Um, if you just Google Morrowind enemies, I think you'll understand right away. Um, because the enemies in that game are like, they're like aliens, dude. They're like alien bug, like nightmare fuel things. <laughs> so, because the whole game takes place in like a dark swamp. Um, so I honestly, wow. just, just from what just I know, low res <laughs> enemies. Well, yeah, you know, this game came out, uh, in between like PS1, PS2 or no, is it like, like, what PS2 is era. coming out of that thing's eye? You know what? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like you can definitely see why this is new weird, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's fantasy mixed with horror or sci-fi mixed with horror, depending on anyway. So yeah, that's new weird. Um, You've done good, Kai. Uh, let's see. What are you at? You at uh, seven points? I think because you earned the one. You're at seven points. You need three more. Okay. We're moving on to the lightning round. Okay. So uh, okay. You, have, you have three more chances. I have three more uh, genres for you. And all you got to tell me is what you think it is. And I will. I will we're going to go quickly through these. And but it's double points, so each one is worth two if you get it right. So you only need to get two of okay. these right. All right. Okay. 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 Um, first one. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, first one. Nano punk. Okay, nano punk is a type of sci-fi that has nanotech inside of it. It's like an integral piece of the technology that they would use is with nano stuff. Bro. Okay. You're that you're off to a great start. Uh, so nano te- nano punk is a subgenre of science fiction that focuses primarily on a world with nanotechnology. 
that is you you absolutely nailed that so you just need to win one more um okay Wait, i can do this next one mythopia 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 like like you know the man the myth the legend okay this is a anime i feel like this is an anime kind of thing where they take the mythos of a specific mythology and make a slice of life out of it almost mm. so that is incorrect uh mythopias Ugh. are it's a genre of stories that create their own mythos essentially so stories that are kind uh, of, okay but i would say things that are like more on a big scale so for instance like star elden Wars. ring and yeah no. uh, but like, like i think elden ring would count but like anything uh, mythopia is actually uh the other definition for mythopia is the act of creating a mythology or myth making so i said ah, like any, dang any, any that was my initial that, thought i gotta go with my gut yeah yeah okay so this is your final chance and this is the hardest okay. one i think so i'm so i'm sorry i really hope you get this one uh the last one is robinsonade which i can robinsonade <laughs> which i what are you doing <laughs> for me what <laughs> so yeah it's uh Give it your, give it, what give it, is that supposed to be? Give it your best shot. I don't know why it's hey. called this. I'll be completely honest. Robinsonade is a story that focuses only on birds. It's like it's like Guardians of Go no no, not just birds, but like animals. It's an animal thing. It's a story on animals. Uh that is incorrect. Uh, no! Robin, no! Rob, Aid is a literary genre of fiction wherein the protagonist is suddenly separated from civilization, usually being shipwrecked or marooned on a secluded and uninhabited what? island. Why is that called a Robinsonade? I don't know, but it is. Uh, so, so uh, like The Martian yes. or Castaway? Yes, exactly. Those are like the two I was going to mention. So, what the freak? I would have never gotten that I, one. I have There's no idea no why it's called that. The world. But the good news, Kai, is that you did end with nine points, and I told you that if you were one point away, I would give you that point for the Western. Oh, oh thank goodness. So, thank goodness. You are at 10 points, which means you've passed, which means I <laughs> will be doing whatever topic you want me to do uh, in two weeks. So, yeah. Uh, how do you feel? Okay. <laughs> How do you <laughs> uh, relieved <laughs> strangely <laughs> relieved yeah. uh, uh yeah. I'm, I'm pretty proud of my my knowledge thus far i felt uh that like all of that time spent listening to like icebergs and stuff has got me uh points in this yeah like honestly if you were to ask me i i probably wouldn't have had nearly as many ideas um but maybe you know like some of these do make sense like nanopunk and uh weird west like those ones make a lot of sense but you know if you tell someone lad lit or if you tell someone uh you know robinsonade it's like dude like i i you did very well because i i honestly was trying to find the ones that would be super hard but i also wanted to make it a little funny and uh you know so like i didn't like i, I went with ones that were maybe a more amusing um, then like i could have just hit you with some weird ones that you i knew you wouldn't have gotten but we had to keep it fun for the game you know um so i hope you enjoyed that's, sure. all, that's all i had for today's episode but uh i hope that you, you everybody at home listening like got something out of this and uh how it, like this goes to show how many genres there are out there there are so many right i only picked a few for this episode and uh, they're they're pretty helpful, you know, because now now these are in your vocabulary. Like you could literally be like, oh, my my new book is a hard boiled lad lit, like that is a little bit of new weird in it, you know. It's like, are I, you I, a hard boiled dick lit <laughs> magnet? Then read this. <laughs> yeah, all you uh, uh, chick lit punk opias at home. Make sure you like and subscribe. But yeah, that, that's it for today. We'll catch you guys next time. 
uh, I've been Logan, and Kai's been, he's been Kai. He's been a wild lit over there. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch you next yep. time. Farewell. Farewell.